You're watching KCPT Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 50 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger, and welcome to The Lawrence Welk Show. This program was taped in 1981 and is called Carnival. Guy Hovis sings The Colors of My Life, Gail, Ron, and Michael encourage us to all put on a happy face, and Myron Florin rips into Tiger Rag. At the end of the show, join me as I visit with the incomparable Rose Weiss, who was the talented costume designer for the show. Now here's the maestro himself, Lawrence Welk. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great pleasure to have you with us. Greetings and welcome to a special carnival show. And as you know, you can always count on lots of fun when the carnival comes to town. There'll be a big brass band to lead the big parade. the life of the great showman and founder of the famous circus. Guy Hovis brings you one of the pretty songs from this show. The colors of my life are bountiful and bold. The purple glow of indigo green and gold the splendor of a sunrise the dazzle of a flame the glory of a rainbow and put them all to shame the quiet browns and grays Quiet 
crowns of gray. I'll take my days instead and fill them till they are. nice audience. A novelty tune by Henry Mancini was a big hit record for our band, and it seems quite timely for this show. You'll notice something new has been added as the band plays the Baby Elephant Walk. One, two, and... Pictures taken. Nah, forget it. Forget oh, come it. on, it'll be oh. fun. Yeah. Gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. Take off your gloomy mask of tragedy. Hey, that's not your style. Yeah. You'll look so good, you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook, stick out that noble chin. Wipe off that full of doubt look, slap on a happy grin. And spread sunshine all over the place. Off the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. Take off your gloomy mask of tragedy. That's not your style. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook. Stick out that noble chin. Wipe off that full of doubt. Look. 
slap on a happy grin and spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy, won't you just try on a happy, cause people like you better. One of the big attractions of the carnival is a perfect setting for Bobby and Elaine. Here they are with the beautiful waltz from Carousel. Right on the carousel, miss? Yes. Thank you. One of Engelbert Humperdinck's big hits seemed to have the proper flavor for this show. Anna Connie sings it for you now in English and in Spanish. <laughs>
On with the show, and we bring you two brilliant accordionists who started their musical training at a very early age. Our fine young trainee from Escondido, Joey Schmidt, joins his idol, Myron Florn, in the exciting Tiger Rag. Yeah. Take it away, boys. <laughs> the gentleman who always has fun with his songs and naturally he's in his glory on this kind of a show ladies and gentlemen Ken Dillo Stoop, sit down be a clown be a clown all the world loves a clown act the fool play the cat and you'll always get the last laugh where the cat and the bells and you'll wait with all the great swells. If you become a doctor, folks will face you with dread. If you become a dentist, they'll be glad when you're dead. You'll get a bigger hand up, you can stand on your head. Be a clown, be a clown, be a clown. Okay, rehearsal time. Everybody up. Here we go. Perfect. Okay.
The Broadway show Jumbo featured circus acts and a beautiful score by Rogers and Hard. George Cates conducts the band in a Bob Ballard arrangement of three of the fine songs from the show. My Romance, Little Girl Blue, and The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Take it away, George. <laughs> I just love this show. It's so colorful and beautiful, thanks to my special guest, Rose Weiss. Be sure to stay with us after the show for a special visit with Rose. Coming up is Norma Zimmer singing Too Long at the Fair. And Jack Immel and I have a lot of fun with the amazing dancing bear. And the Aldridges and Otwell sing Southern Nights. Now, back to the show. Folks, this week, our big band salute takes us on a little different twist. This evening, we pay tribute to the great March King, John Philip Sousa, with his most famous march, The Stars and Stripes Forever.
will be without a good lively march. One of the best loved performers in television is back with us this week. As always, we're happy to present our lovely champagne lady, Norma Zimmer. I wanted the music to play on forever. Have I stayed too long at the fair? I wanted the clown to be constantly clever. Have I stayed too long at the fair? I bought the blue ribbons to tie up my hair, but I couldn't find anybody to care. The merry-go-round is beginning seems to be having a bit of a problem. Let's join Mary Lou Metzger and her partner and see how they work it out. Okay, now let's try it one more time. Okay. Hold it. This ain't gonna work. Now, what do you mean? They're gonna love it. Look, I didn't mind getting shot out of a cannon or even diving 50 feet into a fish tank. But a dancing bear... Oh, come on now. Picture this. 10,000 people in the stands. Yeah. There's a drum roll. Yeah. You walk out. Yeah. The spotlight hits you. Yeah. And then the fanfare. Yeah. I may go out tomorrow if I can borrow a coat to wear. My sincere smile and my dancing bear. Outrageous. <laughs> Alarming. No, courageous. Charming. Oh, who would think a girl and bear could be well accepted everywhere? It's just amazing how fair people can be.
parts of our country segment with a song written by another great country singer, our good friend, the lovely Barbara Mandrell. I remember wearing straight leg Levi's, flannel shirts even when they weren't in style. I remember singing with Roy Rogers at the movies when the West was really wild. I was listening to the Opry while all of my friends were digging rock and roll and rhythm and blues. I was country when country wasn't cool. I remember circling the drive-in, pulling up and turning country songwriters Waylon Hollyfield and Don Williams collaborated on this next tune that Mr. Jim Turner is about to do for you and it's called Till the Rivers All Run Dry. Well thank you Ava. Yeah.
you might know by now, <laughs> that Buddy Merrill is back here with us again this week, and he and Neil Levang are gonna get some really fine backup to Arthur Duncan on the Wabash Cannonball. Woo! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Buddy and Neil sure had that war bash cannonball moving. <laughs> I think I have enough breath left, left to introduce that fabulous foursome, the Aldridge sisters and the Outwell twins. Hey. song just naturally seems to go with the carnival. Let's enjoy it with Bob Ralston and Joe Feeney. It's the loveliest night 
night of the year. Stars twinkle above, and you almost can touch them from here. Words fall into rhyme any time you are holding me near. When you are in love, it's the loveliest night of the year. Waltzing along in the blue, like a breeze drifting over the sand, thrilled by the wonder of you. Wonderful touch of your hand And my heart starts to beat Like a child when a birthday is near So kiss me, my sweet It's the loveliest night of the year much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure all the guests and performers of the carnival will be happy to accept this invitation. Come follow the band. joining all of us at the carnival. 
My special guest is responsible for bringing color and style and grace to the Lawrence Welk Show. And that's because she is the embodiment of style and grace. Please welcome our wonderful costumer, Rose Weiss. Wow, what an introduction. Oh, I'm Mary so Lou. glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. Was it fun for you to look back at this show from 1981? Oh, I love looking back at the all the shows, in fact. And it's like a game I play. Oh, I remember that costume. And oh, I remember this. And I remember <laughs> that. And it's, it's fun. Well, now, you're from Detroit, and your whole family was in the fashion business. You know, I just thought of it the other day about that. My father was a tailor from the time he was 12 years old. He had his own tailor shop and made suits from scratch, had big-time customers. And my mother helped him in the business. My sister was a model of furs and worked for the largest fur store in Detroit, Anna's Furs. So that's also fashion. And I used to work in a department store while going to high school. On Saturdays, I'd work in the millinery department. So there I was, surrounded by little sewers and <laughs> dressers. And so yes. But you were also a singer. Well, that I had great talent when I was young. These days, the voice is shot a little bit. But uh, from the time I was eight, I was singing. And they used to have a show called uh, Uncle Nick's Children's Hour in Detroit on WXYZ. And I sang on that every week, did a little solo number every week. Oh, my gosh. So it was an experience. Well, you continue to sing, though. You've sung all your life. All my life, all through school, in all the glee clubs, and for all the shows at the school. And I had a high school teacher who took great interest in my voice and used to give me lessons at home for nothing. Couldn't afford them. <laughs> One of my favorite Rosie quotes is, make every single day a learning experience. Now, how did that philosophy get you into your career? Because I love taking classes, and I took every single production classes there was to take at college, at Santa Monica City College, that was when I moved here to California, because we left Detroit in 1944. So I've been here many, many years. And I went to school and took voice and took makeup and took fashion design. So I kept involved in all theater arts classes. And that's how I got started. You were actually a makeup artist at one point. I started out as a makeup artist. And ABC hired me after I joined the union. My brother-in-law said, listen, you might as well get money paid for it <laughs> instead of doing all these little theater work for nothing. Why don't you just join the union? So I joined the union. And the first show that they assigned me to for makeup was doing hands for billiard games. <laughs> and that's how I got started. And then they called me to do uh, like a marble body and when I went into the studio and I saw makeup people had to stay there all day long. Right. Whereas the wardrobe people, they were running around and going in and out of their cars and going shopping. I said, that's for me. <laughs> makeup is done. And I drove them crazy until they hired me to do wardrobe at ABC. So what are some of the people and shows that you worked on during your ABC days? Oh, my ABC days were very exciting days. Uh, the very first show I did was to dress for the Lawrence Welk show. Really? I came on as a dresser, and our producer, Ed Sobel, I don't know whether he liked working with a woman better than a man in doing wardrobe or not, but he requested that I be assigned to the Lawrence Welk show. Meanwhile, I worked on the lot, did the pilot for General Hospital, which these days you wouldn't know it's the same show, because... <laughs> We used to just do nurses and doctors and offices. And now there are no hospital scenes in General Hospital, but still going, <laughs> still going. You met some pretty amazing celebrities along the way, too. I have Olivia de Havilland. That was the days of doing the Academy Award shows. I did those for 10 years straight for ABC. And Edith Head covered uh, the show for the uh, TV Academy 
and I for them and I did for the uh, television end of it you had to have television and film one covering another and I could remember Edith had she left something in her car and said would you like to walk t with me to my car we were already in rehearsal at the music center for the Academy Award show and I said sure and we were walking and all of a sudden the mob of fans got onto Edith Head and asked for her autograph and she turned to me and she says, I don't know what they want from a little old seamstress like me. I said, some seamstress. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my gosh. Just, but it was Edith Head and then we had Betty Davis and we had Joan Crawford and, and Olivia de Havilland and it was a very exciting, very exciting time for me. You also got to meet and work with Bob Mackey. Bob Mackey believe it or not, was only a sketcher for Edith Head when he first started out. Really? He, at Paramount Studios, Edith Head uh, didn't do the, her own sketching. She had sketchers. And uh, she would tell him what she wanted. And, uh, and I met him at Western Costume when I was pulling shows for the Lawrence Welk Show. And we used to have lunch with the costumer from the Western Costume who knew Bob very well, and myself, and we'd meet and have lunch. And you've and stayed friends. we stayed friends ever since. He's a fabulous designer, fabulous. Now, did you run into any problems working on The Welk Show <laughs> with Lawrence <laughs> or with us? <laughs> <laughs> Never any problems with Lawrence until some fan wrote in. I had him in Lederhäusen. We, did, we were doing a show, and I had him in costume. She wrote that, how could he possibly wear those short pants with his wobbly knees? <laughs> <laughs> and I, so he says to me, I don't think I will ever get into a costume again. My fans, they don't like it. <laughs> but uh, he, was, he was a doll to work for. He, he did whatever you asked him to do, really. Now the girls, that was another story. <laughs> Wouldn't we have 11 girls eventually. I don't know how you did that. And all the different bodies and all the ones that wanted, you know, something special. And that, fortunately, we were able to switch clothes to fit each other's solo numbers. Mm -hmm. So there was no problem. It really, it was a wonderful group that we had. We were, we were all good together. We didn't fight. Did we, <laughs> we didn't. Never. I don't remember no, once. We really didn't. <laughs> You also made some amazing trips with Bob Hope. That's a really uh, another phase in my lifetime that I was so lucky. I had Lawrence Welk, big show on television. And then Bob Hope's costumer became ill and couldn't travel with him anymore. And from Western Costume, they recommended that they go with me to go on Bob Hope shows to be and so in 1968, I started. You said never retire from what you love to do. What are you doing now? Well, I'm still singing. The voice is shot, but I'm still singing. <laughs> I joined a gospel group, and I want to tell you, I love it. It makes me feel so happy when I go and sing. And I belong to a lyrics choir. So that's what I'm doing. And you're still involved in all of our things. And still involved with my favorite people. Well, Rosie, so, you are so one of our favorite people. Oh, I, I thank love you. you and I thank you. It, you girls and the guys on the show made my life really a pleasure. We love this time with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love and, being with you. And thank you so much for letting us come into your home every week. As Lawrence Welk always said, Keep a song in your heart. Adios, au revoir, I'll be the same.
Quality programming on KCPT is made possible by the generous support of the Marion and Henry Block Family Foundation. Tonight on KCPT, the new tricks team is faced with the death of a young PE teacher and must solve the case quickly and discreetly. Then at 10, contemporary folk rock takes the Austin City Limits stage as Mumford and & Sons and Flogging Molly perform great tunes. You may also enjoy these programs tonight on KCPT2. Join the conversation online and like Friends of KCPT on Facebook. Hi, this is Paul Byram, and I'm coming to Kansas City this spring. I cannot wait. Um, I've got a full show ready for you. Um, so if you want to come along and have the best seats in the house, call the number. The number's flashing here, I hope. If not, I'm going to look very weird. And men at home, don't be afraid to uh, come to a Paul Byram show. It's not going to be a lady fest. Plus, if you've got a lady, bring her along. You get brownie points for the sports season. But please call, and uh, I'll see you at my gigs. Thanks for all your support. KCPT is supported by 435 Magazine, the monthly magazine that keeps Kansas City in the loop by providing editorial coverage of local events, food, music, arts, and culture. 435 Magazine is a love letter to KC, from highlighting new restaurants, top doctors,